Hello and welcome to the Charmed Life Podcast. This podcast is all about magic, metaphysics, mysticism, and the unconditional love of the universe. And I am your host here. My name is Trisha Carr. And this is definitely a very magical episode. I welcome on my guest, Colin Ryan Bedell, astrologer, author, and magnificent teacher and expressor of divine energy. Before I tell you all about Colin and get into our really fun and exciting conversation, I just want to invite you to please subscribe to this podcast, leave us a review, if you will, that will help to boost our light quotient, help us to be able to connect and communicate, and as Colin and I talk about in this, to help us to engage with one another in the unity consciousness. A little bit of a tease there for you. So let me tell you about Colin. Colin Bedell is a queer Gemini twin from Long Island, New York. He's a passionate student of secular personal growth systems and the universal spiritual themes explained and explored in A Course in Miracles. Well and Good magazine listed Colin as one of the most influential people in the wellness industry and as a 2020 innovator. Complementing his work with Queer Cosmos, Colin's the weekly horoscope writer for Cosmopolitan.com. His best-selling first book, A Little Bit of Astrology, from Sterling Publishers, it debuted in November of 2018. His second book, Queer Cosmos, The Astrology of Queer Identities and Relationships, launched last December and was ranked number one astrology book for beginners by The Daily Dot magazine. And his third book, Gemini, by Sterling also. It debuted in January of 2020. I just love so much that he wrote a whole book about Gemini energy. I'm very excited to read it. So Colin, is uh, his website is queercosmos.com. He has an amazing Instagram um, portfolio. They did prolific on it, always sharing and inspiring and really giving deep and grounded and rooted and, and um, just profound wisdom, truly. And we have such a fun conversation. So I don't want to keep you from Colin any longer. So please do enjoy this conversation with myself and Colin Bedell, and I will check chat with you on the other side. Colin, we're already laughing, <laughs> having the most fun. <laughs> I'm so glad. I knew this would happen. I'm so glad. My Capricorn moon sister. Yes. Oh, I love it so much. You're such a, you really give me a lot to chew on about the Capricorn moon. I love my Cap moon because it makes me feel grounded, I guess. You know, it makes me feel like I, <laughs> I'm i something because <laughs> I'm so like airy, fairy, floaty. Right. Well, not airy, actually, watery. <clears throat> but anyway. Right. I love connecting with you on that. And we're actually probably pretty close to your birthday, aren't we? We're getting into Gemini season. We are, yeah. So it's May 17th now, and my birthday is exactly one week. I have one week left of being 32. I turn uh, 32 on May 24th. You'll be 32? Is that oh, 33, you? Jesus. Okay, 33. Oh, my but God. Oh, yeah, the same age the, as the Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. You're wrong with that. Yeah, 33, the Christ year. That's right. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> I love it. This is why I love my friends, the things yeah. we can cross-reference metaphysically. Yeah, no, Jesus, that's it. Right. Yeah, exactly. Your Christ <laughs> consciousness here. We'll see how you do. Oh, God. Yeah, no pressure or anything. Okay. <laughs> Well, I don't know. We have so much that we could talk about for hours and hours, I think. I mean, at least I could. I could talk to you yeah, for hours. Yeah, likewise, likewise. Listen to you. You know, actually, the first thing that's coming to mind, because I know you have a great study in A Course in Miracles. Of course, you're an astrologer, and like your brilliance genius about that, we're going to have to dig into, of course. Um, but yeah, A Course in Miracles. I don't know if you have noticed, but there is a particular platform who has, This is, it's a podcast. And they have ordained themselves sort of the, um, the well, the, 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 I'll just tell you, it's called conspirituality. And have you heard about them? I have. <laughs> tell me more. Tell me more. Yes. Okay. Well, I actually started following them because I was down with some of their messaging. Like one particular thing where they were talking about what... Um, what a, the difference between a conspiracy and a conspiracy theory. And I listened to that episode and I was like, that, that was great. They outlined it really well uh, because mm. con a conspiracy, if you're interested, you, know, you probably- Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, my Gemini ass. Yeah. Fool me, Trisha. 
<laughs> a conspiracy has in common in order for it to be an actual conspiracy successful something that can you know a coup of sorts it has uh it has in common or they all have in common time scope and number time means the amount of time in order to accomplish whatever the conspiracy is uh, so it has to be reasonable it has to be a reasonable time scope meaning how large it is so i mean it's a certain i mean it can't it, like global is kind of hard. It's a little bit too big of a scope. Let's just say that. Uh, but maybe a department or an agency or, you know what I mean? But those things are kind of interrelated too, because the larger the scope, the larger the time, and then things start to get a little bit hairy. And then number means the amount of people that are involved. So all of those things are kind of like the greater they are, the harder or maybe more impossible they are to accomplish because obviously we, nothing can be kept secret now. So number, if you have like more than four people involved, it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> Good point, good point, Ask good the point. Supreme Court, by the way, hello, hello. <laughs> if you could keep secrets. <laughs> no, no, they cannot. Right? Yeah. So. Um, Not funny, but funny. I like the way yeah. you brought that up. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 So anyway, that's what a, that's what a real conspiracy, mm -hmm. that's what humans Perfect. can handle. Time scope numbers. Time uh -huh. scope numbers. Got yeah. It, it has okay. to be kind of like. Uh, so then if it's outside of that, if it's a bit astronomical in any of those areas, then it's probably a conspiracy theory, which means it's not really possible. It's just something that people are talking about. It's like gossip. Oh, gosh. <laughs> okay. And let me guess. Or, so I don't know. Have they brought up A Course of Miracles? How did they cover Okay. That? So the reason – so I liked that episode, except for also they were – they were giving some good information, but then they were also a little too snarky. You know what I mean? Like making fun of people. And so I was like, well, now it's sounding gossipy. How they've brought up A Course in Miracles is that they are sort of on a, they have a, now they've sort of turned into a cancer, cancer. Yeah. But no, <laughs> Freudian slip, cancel culture, which really is persecution um, kind of, you know, target. And they really seem to be wanting to cancel Marianne Williamson. Really? I over know, what? right? Over what? I love her. <laughs> and speaking of Capricorn moons, she's another one. Is she? Yeah. She is. She is. Wait, so under what grounds are they well, trying to bring her to the stocks and pillories? Honestly, they are doing a lot. So uh, <laughs> they are they are doing a lot of um, um, character assassination, and they're doing it and with they they're really using a lot of logical fallacies, you know, like slippery slope, and they're projecting onto her that she's a fundamentalist about like like kind of what's called a quote mining a course of miracles that talks essentially about like how our health is based in our energy, and I'm like, well, that's not radical or. It, it, it does it definitely doesn't mean that I mean even in a, a religion that has had fundamentalists and extremists who take that to the you know to a critical degree where they don't take their child to the hospital that's that you know what I mean like that's still actually in those religions that's still not what those religions are about if you know which ones I'm talking about Yo, like, yes I do yeah those are extremists in that religion who have gone too far with it but of course in miracles is never in my estimate and I'm not a a, a, you know, a great student of it like you are, it's not, it doesn't have that fundamental or extreme kind of belief or pressure about don't ever get medicine, <laughs> you know, never. And it even has a question. It has like a, at the end, it's, it has um, a, stu a study guide and it's like questions that you're mm -hmm. most likely to get. And it does ask about the role of medicine mm -hmm. and it says like, whatever helps and heals. Amen. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. right. Yeah, whatever helps and heals, what's the issue? You know, yeah. and there's just, that's, that's a shame. I think that she's so easy because she is so public mm -hmm. for people to just say some really unfounded things against her. Yeah. Um, and they've confused a lot of some criticism that people have around Louise Hay to yeah. Marianne as well. Exactly. Yeah. Because Louise has done a lot of like heal your life energy. Mm -hmm. um, but Marianne in the 80s was driving gay men dying of AIDS to receive the medical support that they needed and mm -hmm. was creating community support and giving them meals that they couldn't get, uh, get to the grocery store. So she is so not anti science. No kidding. Right. What are we uh talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, and so I, I've seen it like three different times where they're really attacking her and they quote mine, A Course in Miracles and say, see, she obviously believes that, you know, just like those people who let their children die on the couch of an infection, not take them to the, you know, to the doctor. They, I'm barely paraphrasing. <laughs> yeah. See, no, barely, I like a barely paraphrasing, just a little bit. And I can 
that. I could totally see people just like looking at that text. And then also, I think the the like the the cancel culture and and this mm-hmm. level of like pervasive public shaming is yeah. really rooted in like proximity. And so, because Marianne teaches that book, she then must fundamentally like the logical fallacy. Slippery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just like, why don't you bring her on and talk to her? Because exactly. I'm sure she'd say yes. Right. Back, back to Capricorn Moon. She's not afraid of a debate. Right. And, you know, I, <clears throat> this, I feel like this is relevant. The reason I have an urge to talk about this with you is because yeah, you're so please. fantastic with social media oh, and uh, like I'm Instagram. Sorry. You're so great at it. You bring so much authenticity <laughs> and fun and engagement. It's just so great. And I mean it. And But Ooh. spiritual practitioners are coming under a huge fire with social media. So how are you experiencing this? How are you feeling Oh, it? wow. See, Trisha, see, this is why <laughs> I was so excited to chat with you too, because I knew you were going to ask me the really good <laughs> questions. Yes. You know, I lean often on my values, my convictions, my uh, just understanding around pedagogy, the way people mm-hmm. learn uh, and how to cite sources and how to uh, communicate in a way that leaves room for caveat, contingency, nuance, and exploration. Mm -hmm. Um, And it is still a challenge always, absolutely. But I, as a Gemini son, right, I feel like I am responsible to at least attempt to structure and initiate some of those conversations in a way where where they're accessible and informative, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's always my aim. And also because, you know, it right now in New York and across America, it's commencement week, right? So I'm thinking about the school that I graduated from really fondly today. And it did provide me with ways to discuss ideas under a really thoughtful, critical, and like cited lens. So I'm not always nervous actually around discussing some of these ideas because also what could help spirituality, uh, spiritual practitioners, uh, and this is the work of uh, Adam Grant in his book, Think Again, is let's not make our ideas our identity. Right. Yes. That's a problem. That is a pervasive problem. <laughs> right. That is, you know, what I actually see that fundamentalism is not relegated to religions or spirituality. It is political ideologies. And that's what fundamentalism is, is really making your idea your identity. Absolutely. So therefore, if people were to criticize, if people were to say, you know, that's not true, that's not informed, I couldn't help but feel defensive because I feel like I'm being attacked if my ideas are my identity. But I just, hey, look, I'm the messenger. I'm not the message, says the Gemini. So I'm just right. do, 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 talking with you. And if you disagree, that's fine. You know, this isn't the United States of agreement. So <laughs> <laughs> never has been because Lord yeah. knows we have never agreed on anything. This is not new. Yeah. And so, yeah, I just, I enter in the social media conversation from that vantage point. What are my values? What are my spiritual convictions? What do Parsons teach me? How do I cite my sources? How do I leave room for caveat contingency nuance? Therefore, let's just, Dialogue, please. Yeah. And that's, and like you say, cite your sources too. That's really important. I got to say, I was just talking to a friend of mine, Hillary Jackanoff, by the way, and we were- Hi, Hillary. Hey, Hillary. And we were talking about how- there seems to be, I think, again, this this has to do with how me- it's social media, but it's just media because broadcast media, social media, I don't know the differences anymore, honestly. Oh, oh good point. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Right. <laughs> but I mean, because all of that is just manipulating the subconscious mind, putting everyone in fight flight, dropping suggestions down into them. And that's how their ideas become their identity, because they are clinging to them with survival energy. And so that's so why important. people that you are like, I can't believe that person believes that. And, you know, mm-hmm. that person, that, as I know, maybe they're older relatives in your family. They're the most loving person I've ever met. But now they're saying this thing about this group or this individual that they don't even know. How could they actually believe that? And it's because of the structure. The, it's honestly the the, it, the the media, social media, broadcast media, all of it is uh, hypnotizing us, and it's it's still new to our bodies because our bodies That's evolve very slowly, That's and good. so our bodies don't, our nervous systems don't know how to manage it, don't know how to manage that stimulation, don't know how to manage the dopamine that we are now addicted to, and it's so it's putting us in a vulnerable. Uh, really psychologically vulnerable position. So 
I, why did I go there? I don't. I, I'm glad you did. Well, well, maybe you went there to sort of say, so therefore anybody who considers himself a content creator or markets online, mm-hmm. just be really thoughtful about what you're saying into this space. Maybe could that be what you were? For sure. Oh, for? yes. And part of that was because Hillary and I were talking about how uh, people, you know, the, the idea of... Um, people who are spiritual seekers or maybe practitioners and they're sort of a pro they do they actually appropriate practices um you know whether they're cultural or not or ideas that some person and without attribution because my friend hillary said so intelligently she thinks it's because people are getting excitement which is just an emotion confused with that divine yes which is a, a more, you know, a fuller. So they get a little excited about something and they think, I own this and I, you know what I mean? I can share this without citing sources, without attribution, without proper study and grounding of the knowledge. You know what I mean? That's another issue Ooh. I think we're facing. Ooh. <laughs> you enjoy- I know. I'm so with that. I'm like, go oh, Hillary. I want to know Hillary's astrology. And you know what else? Virgo. I think? She's a Virgo. Vir- I know that's her son. <laughs> uh, see, Virgo. I love the mutable energy. Gemini, Sag, Virgo, Pisces. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. I also think that people feel that they have to be the generator of new information because yeah. there is this idea that like, well, I couldn't possibly do well on social media if I'm not saying anything completely original or authentic, be yourself, be this, right? Mm-hmm. And what we know, again, intellectually uh, and academically is there is nothing new under the sun. Mm-hmm. So just set yourself free from that burden of responsibility. And then, I mean, that's all I did at Parsons. And that's all I would do if I ever got my PhD is read other dissertations in academic journals and attempt to prove or disprove. I am not generating anything new other than I just really questioning and querying pre-existing literature and research. That's yeah. all we have to do. So that's, cite your sources. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> cite oh, your boy. sources and, 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 you know, ground in your study before you start sharing. I would say that's, that's, a good that's important to me. Um, that's, a good, and, that's a really good point. Yeah, that's important to me. Well, I'm also, I, do you know your human design? I mean, we talked about it a little bit. What, I what do. Yes, yes, yes. Go, you know, I'm a manifesting generator. Of course you are. I can feel that. But <laughs> do you know what your profile is? <laughs> oh, damn. No, you know, what's yours okay. though? Yeah. Five one. You might be a five one actually, because you feel oh. like a five one to me. Okay. And it's the uh, heretical investigator. Ooh. Ooh. Yeah. I like so the, her- the heretic is always like kind of disrupting and needs to like, you know, bring something to the table that's new. And the investigator is, you know, investigating. <laughs> you're very, you definitely have it. You, I think you're a five one, but you definitely have a one. Yeah. You feel like you definitely have a one because you love to oh, investigate. You love to learn and absorb absolutely. wisdom. Absolutely. And it's such a Gemini transit and clearly you do too. And what I'm impressed that you are actually in the conspirituality podcast, just to kind of feel like, what are they saying that maybe I don't know about what I do? That's why I still follow them. See, I still follow them because I'm like, also because I don't throw Sweet. the baby out with the bathwater because they've said one or two things that I'm like, that's helpful information. I do stop following someone if I just can't. It's just gross every time I look mm. at it. You know what I mean? Mm. But I, I'm curious about, for example, I, that's actually in, informative to me that they're attacking A Course in Miracles and they're attacking Marianne Williamson because there's possibly something in the zeitgeist that is mm. causing people to f- feel that way or think that way or act that way, you know? Yeah, and I'll be honest with you, Trisha, I, I I don't follow them, not because I'm like, oh, I don't want to hear what they have to say, but I haven't even like thought to like do that. But I love that you're not afraid to just listen to the ideas that might challenge you. I think that's the zeitgeist of this moment. We have lost okay. the ability to sit with ideas that we're yes. uncomfortable with, that challenge our pre-existing assumptions, right? And I think a lot of us get value from being the knower and not the learner. So there's that whole idea. And there's just so much, but you're right. I think that uh, there is a zeitgeist happening, I think, around spirituality. I've, I'm, I've always been nervous yeah. about, since astrology has become so popular, is the pendulum going to swing in the other direction? That's exactly what I'm getting at, too. Not just with social media. I mean, it's it's interesting because I, I swear, I'm like, am I a megalomaniac? Is everybody talking about this more than they were five or seven years ago? But I don't think so. I think it is no. like it's – they made some jokes on SNL this weekend, and it was hilarious. You know, he's like uh, – they said this week in Weekend Update, he's like, uh, this weekend we have a super blood full moon, a lunar eclipse, and Mercury retrograde, according to the most annoying person you know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. 
<laughs> but I you swear, are, five years ago, they wouldn't have said Mercury retrograde and like honestly, thought it could no, no. it could pass as a joke that people would understand. It's is, much more ubiquitous now. Spiritual concepts are much more ubiquitous than they used to be, right? And now for these messages. Hello, my friend. It's Trisha Carr. I'm here to invite you to my coaching and mentoring portal, Modern Mystic Life. This high value, easy access portal is like having a spiritual mentor right in your pocket. You'll receive all the inspiration right there in your text messenger, and you can also access it on your desktop. I will be delivering the tools and technology that are proven to evolve your abundant life inside and out. You will receive daily inspiration, education, and practices to help you evolve your life as a mystic and a human spiritual being. Plus, you will have access to my monthly workshops in which I teach and channel cutting edge spiritual content and also will give guidance, intuitive readings, and attunements right there in our group setting. I worked with Spirit to co-create and manifest the best way to support you and in the easiest fashion, and here it is. I'm very excited to co-create with you too. So welcome, my friend, to your modern mystic life. And now back to the show. Yes, and that's sort of, you know, when you're asking about the zeitgeist, I'm thinking of like the parallel phenomenon, which is that the last two years have completely yes. disrupted our version and interpretation of reality. Mm -hmm. So people are so hungry for the possibility of different meaning making lenses. And that's yeah. why any level of spiritual personal development conversation has really provided a space of solace for folks. And I think that that is a beautiful thing when it's, mm -hmm. you know, really thought of ethically and responsibly. And because the law of opposites are typically in full effect, there yes. will be people who say, let's not. There will be people who say, this is too much. It's not informed. Because I also think that you could see this in all of the spaces, Trisha. I'm curious to know what your thoughts are on this. We're just, we're, we can almost weaponize certainty. Oh, people, yeah. People are so afraid of it. And so they'll assume that that's what astrologers are doing. That's what fundamentalists are doing. Or that's what politicians are doing. We're just so afraid of standing in the unknown. Yes. Um, and I am trying my best to never weaponize uncertainty or make the uncertain certain for people. I say, look, I'm an astrologer, but I don't know who does. Right. Oh my so gosh. Just That's... stand there. Go ahead. Well, yes, because, uh, well, you know, my, my work and when I'm to talking to God or whatever, you know, <laughs> channeling, it always comes down to the paradox that you are, you're closest to God when you are embracing paradox and uh, that's the uncertain. That's a <laughs> you like. Look I'm going to bed. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh my God! Speak Gemini to me. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, that's right. It is very Gemini. <laughs> um, wow. Yeah. So it, it right because certainty. In this, uh, like you said, being the knower instead of the learner. That's. Oh, yes, that is so it. It all speaks to destination addiction. Honestly, it speaks to dopamine addiction. Do you know that dopamine Ooh. is actually the chemical that makes you, that something is about to happen? It never actually gets satiated. satiated. So Ooh. it's like one of my teachers, Tabanella, who's, he teaches biofeedback and hypnosis and everything. He was talking about, have you ever seen anyone on Coke? They're telling you, Oh, it's going to be a great night. It's going to be a great night. It's always going to be. You know what I mean? That's what, because Coke particularly opens up the dopamine receptors and we get flooded with dopamine. And that's why we scroll, scroll, scroll on social media. We're trying to find that cool thing until we bonk ourselves out with exhaustion, but we never get that cool thing. So it is a dopamine addiction that is making us want to arrive and be certain and know and and stand and and not be in the uncertainty or the progress in the in the process even. Trisha, you are giving me about seven things I now want to talk to you about. Please. I'm going to sit back. I want to hear them all. <laughs> okay. I know. Because I we were like, well, what should I talk about? Ah, oh, who cares? We'll figure it out. Right. And mm -hmm. we're like, don't put me to this. Mm -hmm. I'm currently thinking about how that process, that emotion around anticipation is very Aries. Oh, yeah. Learning, longing, Instigating. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and in a healthy expression. It's wonderful. It's seductive. It's imaginative. It's beautiful, right? Yeah. Chiron has been in Aries. Aries, it is. That's right. I knew that. I'm Chiron such a is... terrible astrologer, but I actually know that. Yes, yeah, see, way to go. <laughs> and so we are looking at maybe the 
dysregulated energy around too much dopamine. I can totally yeah. like pontificate about that or just like work that in. Jupiter is now in Aries until uh, October 29th and then it's going to stay there next year. But I, I think that what we're seeing in the culture today is probably too much Aries and desire and wanting and yearning and not enough Saturn constriction, responsibility, et cetera. Because the third point that I'll say is I really love the work of speaking of people who I follow, who I might challenge with. His name is Scott Stanley, Dr. Scott Stanley. He's a marital researcher. Um, and he's like a very proud but respectful Republican. So I'm like, okay. Right. But what he talks about is the research around uh, commitment and that commitment is a function of desire and constraint mm -hmm. because I want, then I must. Yeah. I think we have a lot of want I'm entitled and I desire. And so, and not enough. That means I'm going to have to rein it in. I'm going to mm -hmm. have to do things differently. And I'm going to actually have to have a little bit more Saturn and not enough Mars. I think we're probably seeing in our culture today an overemphasis on desire and reaching and yearning and dopamine and not enough spaciousness, boundary, commitment, responsibility, grit and resilience and discomfort. And that's why our Capricorn, Capricorn moons really bond. Because if we just see people, you know, walk, uh, talk in the talk and not walk in the walk, we're going to be like, this ain't flying with me, honey. Yeah. So anyway, I don't know if that lands or provides oh, more context for you, but yes. I love it. Yes. Uh, and he, the idea – so what what I'm calling to mind with the Dr. Stanley, that Dr. Scott Stanley that you mentioned about the commitment, um, I'm thinking of – so in my gene keys, I have gene key 19, and it, it, it gene keys have like – do you know about your gene keys? No, but I've heard oh. you're the third person to mention them to me, so I'm going to have to book a meeting with you now. Go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, just get the book and and look at you know pull your hologenetic profile, get the book, and then just like work uh, like look at what the sphere for your purpose is, you know, like that category. It's very much like looking at an astrological chart, but it's actually simpler, I think. But anyway, but it works in frequency bands. So like Gene Key 19, I have in three parts of my chart, and the the shadow frequency of Gene Key 19 is codependence. The um, the uh, what do you call it? Gift is sensitivity. And then the city is sacrifice. But better said, what they actually worked through is codependence to independence to interdependence. Interdependence. So the sacrifice component that he's talking about isn't like martyr sacrifice or, you know, codependency, you know, which is actually giving up your identity and, and, and subverting yourself. It's actually about giving up something compromising so that there is a greater good achieved. Like in a relationship, I'm going to give up my Saturday night because I want to honor my partner. You know what I mean? Like I want to be with them. That kind of, that's a very simple example, but that right. idea, right? Yeah. And I think we, believe that we're entitled to so many choices. And I think we realize that if I choose, that I have to choose not to choose other things. And mm. people don't want to do that. Yeah. And, I, and, and it, I, Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, no, it's okay. Go, you go ahead. Yeah. I just think that's that Saturnian energy that you and I are actually really comfortable in, which is like, yeah. no, because I want this, then I must do that. Because yes. I think that what all the earth signs have in common, but I've really been musing on it for Taurus season, is that they don't really slide into the things. They decide things. That's another mm. Scott Stanley idea, is that you need to decide commitment, not slide into commitment. Mm. So the distinction between sliding and deciding. And that's why, you know, earth signs were the first ones to be like, hold on a minute. What are you asking me? And who mm -hmm. will do what by when? And what's mm -hmm. really going on here? Okay, so then fine. I'll say yes to this. I'll say no to that. And we're off to the races. But maybe yeah. that's something else we're considering. It's just that people love choice. They almost want to dwell in maybe too much possibility and not enough like earthly reality people make a decision. That's that Aries energy. And if you think about it, Aries is all about uh, is all about uh, depend. I mean, not dependence, um, independence, in independence, yeah. yes. independence. Yes. All about independence. I and mean, yes. that's kind of like its spark is is independence. Yes. And and we need that, right? You can't have relationships without autonomy. You yeah. can't have intimacy without a space of separation and differentiation. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's intrusion, it's surveillance. So we need that Aries energy. But I think what we're seeing is we might have swung a little too far, right? right. In terms of, well, okay, we all have we all have our wants and our independence and autonomy. Absolutely. But we also have responsibilities to other people. Yeah. 
Yeah. We have ethics that we need to establish with communities as well. And like, can we talk about that too? So, yeah. Yes. Uh, <laughs> actually, can we talk about the distinction Let's talk between about it. ethics and morals? That's something else that people are getting confused about. <laughs> Hit me with the Capricorn moon. Hit me with it. <laughs> tell me, tell me. Morals are personal. Morals are, are not empirical. They're the way that you feel and it informs your actions. It's like your be, it's your sense of being, you know what I mean? It's not empirical. It's not evidential or it's evidential for you personally. Like if I, if I kind of adhere to this sense of morality, then I have positive results. It makes me a better person. Ideally, that's what it would be. Mm -hmm. But our morals are not, you know, ethics are collective, how we treat one another. And honestly, it's a lower hanging fruit because it needs to be more flexible. It needs to be, it's a more critical level of what is permissive in our uh, relating to one another. That means how I feel about my life, I am not allowed to project onto your life. You know what I mean? Like that's a certain kind of right. I would never do that. I don't care. It has nothing to do with our ethics. That's and our laws are based on ethics, you know, low hanging fruit. Don't murder people. <laughs> that would be nice, right? That's an ethic, right? Right. <laughs> Yes. And you know so, what you're yeah, me think of too? Mm -hmm. That they're situationally based and context specific and people yeah. don't love that. They want yes. uniformity. They want one size fits all because like I think a lot about ethics in the US for as an example, right? Like the way that I communicate in New York, I cannot communicate like that in California. And I, oh, I I know. And sometimes I really like I have an inner New Yorker and I was like, I wish I could. If I were a New Yorker, I would so say this right now, but there's no way because we're so fragile, like in L.A. <laughs> <laughs> but, but sweet and kind and lovely. And, they and passive aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> you said it not me, sister. But don't. I, but I appreciate that. Like, honey, you're not. You're not in your hometown. So tone it all the way down. You know. And even yeah. I was in Italy for three months, and there was a lot of like, whoa, how do they do things? Oh, so it's rude to make eye contact. And I think people struggle with stepping outside of like their own time, space, and context, and adapting, adapting to the context of others. It's too much critical analysis for folks, and they're just like, mm -hmm. nope, forget it. The Bible told me this, so therefore, let's overturn Roe v. Wade. Oh, okay. But I got to say, the Bible didn't even, not that I care, because I don't believe in any book being infallible, because that doesn't make there any sense, go. because you can tear out a page and hand it to someone, and it doesn't spontaneously grow itself back. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, but anyway. Okay, that's, that's <laughs> solid. Go ahead. Go ahead, It's Trisha. just like, it's a supernatural concept that's just not even possible in the hands of natural beings. But at any rate, the Bible doesn't talk about abortion, <laughs> by so the way. What are we talking? I don't, right. By the way, <laughs> by the way, it didn't exist. <laughs> and, and then, by the way, I think it was uh, Justice Clarence Thomas talking about how, like, the founding fathers never mentioned it because there were no women present. Right. Exactly. They were Hello. not too concerned about it. And and Hello. there was a 50%, uh, you know, death rate for <laughs> births anyway, for labor. Yeah. So, yeah, right. it wasn't what, really you, You're lucky if you lived to 40. Yes. So we weren't thinking about that. Right. You know, right. And it's just like, it's just but fundamentalism, you know, mm -hmm. the conservative side loves a literal, forever true interpretation of the Constitution. And the progressives have always been asking, how do we situate this in today's culture? And theoretically, that can be beautiful, you know, the clash of tradition and innovation. But both sides have become so fundamental that mm -hmm. we're no Nothing's longer, you know, the United States. Nothing's getting done because if we're not the United States of uh, of disagreement anymore, we're the United States of disgust. It's just, mm -hmm. it's a disgust that I see. And that's really, I'd love for us to work on that. But here I go again, Gemini tangent. You just inspired me. So I'm going to zip it <laughs> while I can. Oh, okay. I don't think so. I think, I don't think any of it's tangential. I think this is all, this conversation is really just, <clears throat> what what is this conversation about, Colin? What are we talking about? Are we talking about, you know. The state of I, the union, maybe? The state, yeah, the state, the state of, the of the spiritual of, union. Of, of the unity consciousness and how do we do that? <laughs> the state of the unity consciousness. <laughs> yes. I love it. I almost, I could see like the, the CNBC, like the political alignments now. It's not the state of the union. It's Colin and Trisha on the state of the unity consciousness. <laughs> yeah. And it. we end with, it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, who knows, right? Because Trisha, what'd you say about that? The closer you are to paradox, the closer you are to God. That's all we have to say. Yeah. Have a great day. Right. No, we're out. <laughs> yeah. I well, I mean, you're always evolving so much in your spiritual development. I mean, it's just so clear and you just are, you know, so much 
uh, potent wisdom in everything that you present. And, you know, you are an astrologer. You are a student. And I mean, I would say a teacher, but, you know, a student, I'm sure you would prefer of A Course in Miracles and so many other things. So what have you, what are you passionate about right now that is helping you and helping your clients and helping people around you? Beautiful question. Well, first of all, I'm passionate about your ability to structure conversations and questioning <laughs> impeccably. That's what the, I'm passionate about, Trisha. <laughs> Okay. And also what I'll say is actually, uh, I actually have the book right near me somewhere here. Um, it's called, oh, is it behind me? Oh, Hello, Goodbye by De Skildrecht. Um, and it's all about how we need to bring back rituals and really just ritual because uh, astrologically speaking for anybody who cares, I have a Virgo South node and a moon in the sixth house. So I'm really big on punctuation marks, frankly, between transition and those mm. threshold spaces. And I think because the last two years have taken us away from commutes, birthdays, graduations, weddings, funerals, we're experiencing such collective uncertainty and loss. And what I would really love for folks to remember is actually just the power of the ritual and the power of the routine to remind them that there's always something that they can do to conjure awe, contentment, gratitude, and that we need those transitions. You know, you, me, your friend Hillary, and we'll just insert a cool Sagittarius here. We're the four signs that midwife and minister, you know, mm. we give birth to new things and we minister the dying without that energy. We are lost. We were very lost. So I'm getting really into that space around ritual around the sacred spaciousness for demarcation, delineation, and transition. And it has really healed me fairly fast. Wow. I'm getting, I'm getting the spirit chills. And what I'm hearing you talk oh. about in that is death doula as a, you know, it is a ritual that's necessary. And, Absolutely. and the weird thing is that last week with a client, it came, I came up with a client I, you know, I just channeled that, you know, that this person basically was like a death doula in, in everything that she did. And she, after I came out of channel, she was like, I can't believe it. I just literally looked up death doula like two days ago and my friend suggested it. So, you know what I mean? Like it was amazing. Then I walked into the living room while my husband was watching some TV show. And actually, no, I had told him something about the word death doula and he had never heard it before. And, um, and he, and he, then he, I walked in after that and then he was like, oh my God, hold on. And he rewound it. And they actually mentioned it in this regular, like Netflix streaming show, the word death doula. And they had a death doula situation going on there, but maybe we need to put by ritual, put to rest, put a punctuation mark on some of the things that we've been experiencing this last, these last two years. Is that your idea That's specifically 100%. right now? Mm -hmm. Yes. And really just having us kind of look at our lives and say, how have I been affected by no weddings, birthdays, funerals, graduations, yeah. uh, you know, and just feeling like I live a life without transition, you know, yeah. because what we need to remember is that human beings are organized also in spatial terms, right? Especially like I'm in New York City right now. So based on where I am, that space signifies you're going to school, you're going here, you're going underground. Like it, mm -hmm. it, we're, all, we're all organized spatially. We have been experiencing the last two years predominantly in one room, in one house, in one screen, in one chair. That has consequences. Yeah. And so Absolutely. we lose the punctuation, the delineation, right? And so that's what's, I've just been so fascinated by that conversation. And I'm learning from Dave School Gact, I'm learning from Esther Perel and others about how rituals are routines embedded with meaning and how do we lift mm -hmm. them up? Like I, I wasn't going to do anything wild for my birthday, but I decided to fly to Rome that night. Just because I want, I wanted to get out of the the, the consistent, the familiar. Yes. I wanted to go back. I wanted to feel that energy at an airport and and hear the Italians yelling at me. I wanted that signal, and that's how I'm trying to honor that as best as I can. Wow. Yeah. I know. And I can. I think we can all relate to that if we get a bit complacent, and you know. And then we we actually, if there's some opportunity, for example, to travel, while that can be exhausting and it can be disrupting, yeah. somehow as soon as you do it, it just shifts. It just refreshes the neurology. I think it refreshes your energy. It even if it's not the best vacation ever, it just changes perspective and helps you to realize that you are a fluid being. More, I think. That's yeah. Such a good then, point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. 
Oh, uh, the, you know, ritual is so important. Ritual is it is um, it's like a thought form energy where we are layering it with all of this, you know, high vibration, this honoring, compassion, forgiveness, whatever we need to put into it, and it's this really intense package of energy that we allow to. Uh, imbue our, our form, imbue our space, uh, you know, our family, where, however we're using it. And that's why I think Ho'oponopono, the Hawaiian Huna um, practice, spiritual practice, is like the most dynamic, powerful spiritual ritual. Yeah. And the thing about ritual is that it has to be real, though. You know what I mean? Like that's yeah. some, some religions that are antiquated in their ritualistic practicing, and all of them, I think, have those aspects, and they no longer have feeling to them. And, and so it's like the ritual has become the master instead of the, the human or the, the consciousness being able to actually be the creator of it and then allow it to be the tool. And so that's, Ooh. I think it's important. So that we don't, again, throw the baby out with the bathwater. Like, right. And I, yeah, and I think mm -hmm. that's what people are seeing mm -hmm. in response to the last two years because we've lost those rituals and routines yeah. that we are feeling unanchored. We're feeling uh, what Adam Grant calls languishing. Uh, mm -hmm. Pauline Boss would call ambiguous loss. We know mm, we've yeah. lost something, but we just don't know what. We yeah. lost transition. We lost the threshold. Enter the mutable signs once again, Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces, to sort of stand in that threshold and that go-between and help other people realize something is ending and something is beginning. So I will yeah. minister and I will midwife this for you. Oh, that's so good. And, you know, ritual, I think, it, I think it is something that can be brought back. I mean, it's, it's brought back. But for some people who don't have never had a positive experience with ritual, right. they could feel, you know, it can feel compulsory or it could uh, even feel constricting or it can feel yes. codependent. Like it doesn't, Ooh, it doesn't yeah. recognize who I am. You know what I mean? Like it's something right. that my parents, grandparents, great, great, great parents, you know, the silent era passed down to me and it means nothing to me. Yes. Uh, but creating your own ritual, that's, Yeah. How do you do that? that? What do you oh do? God, that's yeah, that's the that's the the life's work, right? Well, <laughs> just to relate to that, yeah, I was baptized Catholic, did mm -hmm. the whole confirmation, the whole thing. So like, I knew of the power of ritual, but like, I I still don't know what it really meant, you know. Mm -hmm. So I get that resistance, you know. Mm -hmm. But I do think there's something really beautiful about Catholicism and Judaism that there are systems in place for significant transitions, yeah. like death, like uh, Christmas. Like Lent, you know, there's all these beautiful things to instill tradition and continuity in an unstable world. But my morning routine is wake up, do the workbook of A Course in Miracles, meditate on it for five to 10 minutes. And then I actually really love the, the morning pages, the mm -hmm. homework for anybody who starts The Artist Way by Julia Cameron. Yes. So uh -huh. now, yeah, I finally started doing it. I have I just started it too. You just Did started you? doing Artist Way? Yeah, I well, swear. But... <laughs> Last week, I... I used to finally, I couldn't believe that I hadn't. And I told my husband, he's like, what? You haven't? Because he, he's like, right. I did that in the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> you married the right guy. You really yeah. fucking did. How you did? Uh, yeah. So how are, how's it going so far? The, it's great. The I've just I've just started to open it up, but like even just starting to listen to the introduction, I'm I'm like, uh, oh my gosh, it's interesting to me that it seems to me like spirit will hold things off from me for uh, a while. I, you know, I'm like, I can't believe I didn't do this yet. I've heard about it, but I wasn't I didn't yeah. wasn't compelled to do it. Or even something like Gene Keys. And I'm like, seriously, or I didn't learn about this until now. But meanwhile, I've somehow been walking down that path, saying these words from another just source. It's, it's, it's really awesome. But that's the universality. That's the state of the un unity consciousness. <laughs> there we go. I, I spoken like Trisha the Pisces. Trisha said it. Absolutely. The state of the unity consciousness is universality. And I also think if we have something in front of us that we are not ready for, our body will just be like, yeah. No but there is something so powerful about it. Well, yeah, I, I started doing it. Technically, I'm almost at one year, but in, in Catholic okay. profession, I'm like, I just started, right? Because <laughs> I can't believe doing it that long. Um, but it's true, I started last July and it, mm. I'm still living with the effects every mm. single day of just like giving myself spaciousness and structuring my thoughts. And I love to write down the 10 spiritual principles that's in there. Number five is my favorite, that creativity is God's gift to everyone. Using your creativity is our gift back to God. Yes. Oh, amen. Amen. You know, so I just, that's my routine is mm -hmm. wake up, Course in Miracles, meditate, morning page. And then from there, I feel like I'll have a pretty clear understanding of like what to do at what time with who. 
Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah, so you've, you've uh, blessed the whole day. You've blessed this whole diurnal cycle with the deep contemplation and meditation and everything. Yes. It's a beautiful ritual. Yeah. And I... Oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead. Well, I just wanted to read something about like the, the rituals and routines because I'm telling you, this yeah. is incredible because I think people need these um, reminders. Let me just type this in here. It's about ritual. And of course, in true Mercury retrograde fashion, now I cannot find it. Okay. Oh, yes, I can. Here we go. Ritual. Okay. So it's by the author of the book that I was mentioning, uh, Hello, Goodbye. And it's by Dave Skogrecht, once again, who says, rituals are the rhythms and traditions that give us a sense of stability in the face of uncertainty by reminding us there's always something we can do, say, or make that conjures awe, contentment, and gratitude. They give us a way to acknowledge through our actions that as life changes, we too must change. Mm. Yes. And the cycles, it's important, it's important to recognize cycles. And that is something that it, without ritual, without the punctuations, it's like we've been in a suspended state of liminality. Instead, it, So in a way, we didn't have any liminal spaces. We didn't have any thresholds. We were in the threshold, Correct. suspended in it. Correct. And then, therefore, we didn't feel cycles. And we're natural beings. We are nature. Nature has cycles. And so, you know... That's the seed has to be in the soil without the sunlight for a while in order for it to get cold enough for the shell to crack and then to bust open. But we haven't been feeling that's the state flower of Texas blue bonnet. That's actually how it works. If there's no freeze, there's no flowers. It's really oh, awesome. Wow. I did not know that. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. such a beautiful metaphor. Yeah. It is. That's but keep going. I'm loving what you're saying. Oh, that's about it. It's just the, how important the cycles are. When we're talking about ritual, yes. we're talking about the thresholds without cycles, and that's what astrology gives us too, to recognize cycles and archetypes. And that that's just a part of, and I, to be able to find um, themes in the one story, like in, in the, that's the paradox again. Like there's, oh, I'm, I'm going all over the place. I'm remembering. Oh, I, love course, it, I love it. I love it. I love A Course in Miracles. I quote this all the time. All of God's children are special and none of God's children are special. That's paradox. 100%. So like, don't take yourself too seriously. Yeah. But take yeah. life seriously. But do yeah. it, yeah. Yeah, right. I know. Take it. Yeah, right. I know. Yes. And people, oh, have we not? And and that, speaking of it, I think biblically, because whoever, up for debate, one of our, our ancestors ate from the knowledge of good and evil, mm -hmm. we have been paying that in our binary thinking ever since. <sighs> wow. So yes. Absolutely. It's this or it's that. It's this or it's that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. because we couldn't possibly hold both and uh, not only, but also, and what we don't know, we don't even know, we don't know yet. Yeah. That's why we go, oh, and we short circuit in the face of paradox. Oh my gosh. Why, why, why did we choose to be humans, Colin? It's so hard. Girl, you, you tell me if you're channeling, <laughs> if you're talking to God, can you let me know in your next morning pages <laughs> session and then tell me and text me immediately and say, I got it. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're like, no, because I don't know yet. Right. Because we're, we are the one, and this actually, it did ask this of, I was languishing away at this question with God, with the universe. Why are, why are humans so different? Because you know I'm an animal communicator and, yes. you know, oh, and yeah. everything. And so I'm like, why are we so different than everything else on this planet? And it's, boom, it's because you're not native here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like... <laughs> You're not totally native. Like it's a, maybe we're a hybridized race and, you know, the, the natural or more native hominid is still on the planet, but not exactly who we are. So that makes a little sense to me, but we do have this capacity to, not to digress. <laughs> and no, yeah, no, we start talking about Sasquatch it. and everything. No. <laughs> Such a Pisces conversation. I love it. Go ahead. But the capacity that we have to, well, first of all, to even have a mind that is paradoxical, to be able to have a, a conscious mind, a critical layer, and then a subconscious mind. And that's not how it works for trees or animals. I mean, a dog isn't lying there in the sun because it's bored or even because it's thinking about anything. It's he or she is just being. And it's, it you know, and it literally like, you know, cats have more alpha brain waves than we do, a lot more. And, and so they just are in a state that is more holistic than we are. And we're capable of creating separation. And there's something about that that is a miracle. If you could zoom out and look at us as Archangel Michael and be like, wow, that's pretty rad. 
that they can believe that lie. <laughs> That's a magic trick. <laughs> I'll show you magic. These lies that the humans are telling themselves. Right. That they're somehow not good enough, that they're not strong enough, that they're, you know, I mean, that death is real. And, you know, so, yeah. Anyway, that's a. I love it. The, the illusion, <laughs> but then we, if we can master illusion with something like a ritual, you know what I mean? Because yeah. a ritual is an illusion that we create, that is that we are benefiting by, but we are able to stay sovereign and master over it, right? That's what I'm oh, thinking. Yeah, yeah. It, for me, I think rituals allow me to stand in the illusion mm. and invoke reality. <sighs> You know, I don't know. Well, because you were talking about illusion. No, it's true. Like, because the, the minute I wake up, my brain is going to, oh, my God, this job's not going to work out. This person's mad at me. I'm yeah. never going to get paid again. Why do I think I'm doing this? I should just quit. And I know I'm not the only one. And that's no right. laughter. Right. I know. So like, even if you, go. and you're an, so the, you're an entrepreneur, like it's not, it, I've, I've had a job and felt that same way. You know what I mean? Right. So oh, there's, none of us are just, special. <laughs> <laughs> None of us are special here. But the rituals give me that space to stand there and go, whoa, 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 whoa. That's mm -hmm. let me invoke reality with a capital R and let me live from this. Because hey, the law of free will states I can think that if that's if I want to. I don't have to. So that's what the rituals give me. Like get your mind where it needs to be. Yeah. Yeah. And it's that idea of, well, is that, you know, is that helping? With the, you know, free will is like, I mean, free will won't even counsel you because free will just says you're allowed to do it. But we have to ask, we have to be the one, we have to be the Lord of the manor to say, well, is that thought, feeling, vibration actually helping? You know, that, that disbelief. I love that you said Lord of the manor. Yeah. I'm sorry. Lord of the manor. That is so funny. I don't know why. That was like, I hate the word Lord. <laughs> Somehow right. I wanted too? to say that. Well, right. generally, generally yeah, from the, right. my, the connotation that it's, that it, I was, you know, associated with going up in my life. Yeah. You know. Oh, noted. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. We don't love that I, word, but it, go ahead. Well, yeah. To, to speak of like, to associate it with God. I, I, that's, I, I've always had the heebie-jeebies about that one. Oh, noted. Okay. So your Capricorn was like, I'm skeptical. I'm suspicious. I don't like <laughs> this. Uh, this is the Lord of the Matter. I don't know about this, but it was just <laughs> No, no. I had fun with it though. It was like hearkening right. on some kind of yeah, right. I don't know. Yeah, it felt good to me. But probably, uh, I think it just pulled it out of you, though. That's why, because you liked it. <laughs> yeah, probably, because it just made me laugh. I'm like, you're right. We are the Lord of this manner. Damn it. <laughs> okay. And I won't let thoughts, vibrations, frequencies come in if it's really not helpful, instructive, loving, generative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mm -hmm. won't allow it. Well, and the thing is, too, this harkens the, um, I would say, the skeptics and the critics of spiritual concepts saying that, oh, you know, that we love and light everything away, but that's not what you're referring to. In fact, the the shadow, the negative feelings, emotions, and thoughts are resourceful. They help us to understand the obstacles that we are stepping on top of and overcoming, right? Yes. And you know what? I think uh, personally, I don't know if, if I'm alone here, but I really don't see a ton of spiritual practitioners pretending that everything is fine. I don't either. Well, I definitely like, don't attract oh, them or follow them. So I know oh, I agree. Point. Yeah, but they I, might be out there, but yeah. go ahead. I mostly follow people, I guess, but I, I am attracting people. I am seeing people complain about it. So <laughs> Right. So it's like, <laughs> why, oh, why just, am I doing that? Right. And maybe they're doing it to be like, I'm not like those people. And then where are those people? I don't yeah. see them necessarily. But no, I just wanted to say, I think that what we would really benefit from too, just anybody in this in this community would be like a quick little like, mental health seminar on just like the adaptive functioning of anxiety and some tough emotions that it actually serves our survival, right? You know, we yeah. can't be completely liberated from fear or anxiety. Like a, a lot of it can be really helpful. And then also like a historical analysis of the United States. If mm -hmm. we can like grant ourselves in like the presence of, uh, or the present of social emotional literature, and then also some historical situations of like how did we get here because you know gore vidal calls the united states the united states of amnesia yeah, no have... kidding so <laughs> true we have no historical framework and know? it's gotten it's gotten more it's become even more and more that way with the information age well you know like this is mm -hmm. kind of off topic a little bit but it's not no. really when no, when uh, kanye west i don't remember what award show it was and kanye west was performing and he had a paul mccartney come in and like do a little cameo and he showed up halfway and people were actually on twitter going i don't know who this paul mccartney guy is but he Stop. just got really lucky that kanye west gave him that career boost <laughs> or no, that's or shame. 
Yeah, you were like, you know what? What are we going to do about the youth today? Right, but it is different because when I was young, I didn't have as much stimulation or availability uh, of seeming information. I wasn't completely saturated, so I did need to resource culture, literature, art that preceded me, and so there was this a little bit more of a through line of culture and art, and you know. Um, but now, because we're so overly saturated, they get saturated by just turn by waking up, you know, opening yes. their eyes. That it's hard to go deep and resource, you know, something that. So that's why, and that's another reason why the amnesia is going to get even more pronounced. I think you're probably right, and I'm also seeing this now as like a Capricorn Moon shared affection. And Marianne Williamson is another uh, student of American history, right? And yeah. she's a Capricorn Moon as well. I think that we are curious about the stories and the themes and and maybe too, like the fact that history is instructive, you know, I think that without historical analysis, we can look at what's happening in America today and go, oh my God, we're cooked, right? <laughs> it's when, true. when, if we look at the history of America, like the fact, and of course, obviously we wish we didn't have to go through this, the civil war, but the fact that white supremacy and, and enslavement was literally embedded in the economic institution of the American South, and it is no longer, we have already had political miracles. We have already oh, had. That's great. We have already, we've seen it in the 1940s as well, when FDR, not a Capricorn movement, but an Aquarius, passed significant social and economic legislation. Yeah. So let's act like we're reinventing any wheels here. We just need to look back a little bit to understand how we got here and like maybe even have a little bit of pride in that. Yeah, America can get it wrong. We can certainly see that. But then America can really come alive when our hearts are on fire with new information. Oh, so that's, that's why I love history because I'm like, it's instructive. It helps me understand the larger story. It's inspirational. I feel proud. I'm also embarrassed of yeah. what so much of my country has done, our country has done. But it's so instructive. And I wish more people looked to the past for guidance on the present. Oh, that's so true. History is medicine. It, it, it can be. History is medicine. It, it can. <laughs> yes, baby. Capricorn moon. Yes. Yes. <laughs> My sister-in-law and brother-in-law, her husband, um, they're they're Western historians, and so when something is getting really like intense, my husband will call his sister and say, "Okay, is is this? I mean, what's going on? Is it okay?" And she's like, "Oh yeah, it's gonna, you know, it's this has happened before. It's exactly what you know what I mean, like." And <laughs> she'll give us context around it. Um, like for example, well, we this is not you know, the West, but, you know, she, we called her when we wanted to talk about what was going on with the Russia, Ukraine, with mm. Russia, you know, invading Ukraine. Um, yeah. How are you doing with that? I, I mean, that's just like, so it's a, it's a poison that we're all absorbing, especially those who are sensitive, spiritual seekers, you know? Yeah. I was actually in Italy when it happened. I'm mm. back in New York now. Uh -huh. And I was really inspired by, uh, cause I think of, of all the countries in Europe, if was, if I heard this American, this Italian journalist tell me correctly, of all the countries in Europe, the Ukrainian refugees went to Italy the most. Oh. And they were, yeah, which of course, right? The food, the welcoming, the family. So I, it was this parallel phenomenon too of like deep sadness and anguish for what they were experiencing. And then also how particular um, colorism and racism was experiencing there too. That also broke my heart, seeing it globally, mm -hmm. not just in the United States. But then when I was watching uh, the way in which Rome and uh, Italians were all hands on deck for that. Mm -hmm. That felt really, really inspirational to me. I was really proud of them. That's and it was nice. beautiful to see. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah nice. How are you doing with that? Uh, well, you know, I am very hopeful and I'm actually doing ritual around it, you know, oh. like kind of sending it out into the you know, it to it connecting it to the egregore thought form energy of other people who are doing that positive uh, ritualistic work of prayer and 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 love and belief and it uh, of healing and overcoming it. Um, but yeah, it's it's hard. I, 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 you know, my husband actually worked with uh, Zelensky on five films. My husband's a composer, and so he worked with him up until, you know, he he quit to to move into politics. Um, and so I have very close friends because of that. And because, yeah, so I have friends who are, I have friends who are Russian and Ukrainian Americans. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I have very close friends who are actually very close friends with Zelensky. And mm -hmm. the second that it happened, I was like, that it started, I was like, 
oh my God, he won't leave. I just know he won't leave. And so they're just going to kill him. Like I just panicked. <laughs> you know what oh, I mean? Not that he, I mean, the, they're killing all kinds of other people and it's horrific. The atrocities against humanity, like you could, there's just open source. You can listen on Telegram about the conversations of what's going on. Really, no one, no one filtering it. I mean, you have to be able to speak the languages, but you, mm -hmm. you can hear what's going on. But mm -hmm. it does feel to me like we, like there's going, it, it's going to, it, I mean, it's not today. So there's still people suffering and dying. And, but um, I feel like we're going to move past it this year. I feel like it's this year before the end of the year. Okay. Well, I'll join in conscious with you on that and I'll make sure that I keep Ukraine in my morning rituals as well. Yes. Amen. Okay. I love that. Yes. Yeah. But it's, it's, I think that is creating a deep, all of the wars and everything that's going on, it's creating a layer of pain that plus, you know, climate change and, and the environment that's creating a layer of, of activation of the pain, collective pain body for everyone. And those who are spiritual seekers, maybe it feels like sometimes it can take us out of the game. And then others who are not really, you know, doing ritual or, or, or con contemplative spiritual thought, you know, they don't have, they haven't had that space in their day created or, you know, whatever me, you know what I mean? Like, yes, then yeah, they are just true. feeling the fight flight and they're feeling, and they're probably getting sick too. I mean, we're all getting sick, I think, because of that yes. collective pain body stimulation uh, mm -hmm. awakened. Yeah. And all the more reason why we have to be really thoughtful and deliberate about proactively cultivating emotional, psychological, holistic yeah. well-being. Yeah, because we're of no use to ourselves or to Ukraine or any country or any mm -hmm. person, spirit that needs our help. Yeah, amen. Well, you know, I want to, I'm going to wrap it up here in a moment, but I do want to wrap it up in a higher note. <laughs> yes, yes, I know. We went on a lot of journeys. I love it, though. We were honest. We were honest. We needed to be. Yeah, but in somewhat practical on the somewhat practical side, you're sharing all of your amazing rituals, you know, that you, you know, how you are shaping and conducting your day and your cycles and also vulnerably sharing about, of course, I have fears about, you know, work, not and everything. And you are overall an entrepreneur. What has your journey been like to be able to craft your life in a way that you can even, you know, have intentional morning ritual because there's so many people who are being run ragged and raw and they're like, I couldn't, I don't know how to meditate for five minutes and I don't have five minutes, you know? So oh, great question. How do you address that? that? We, yeah. We brought it to others in applicability. Mm -hmm. So I actually started my morning routine practice the week after I graduated Parsons and I was unemployed two months behind on my rent and was extremely anxious. Mm -hmm. And so I started literally in like my own hellscape. Right. Mm -hmm. But I knew like, I need this even more if this is where I'm at. And so yeah. I just started by like taking those small steps around like, okay, just meditate for five minutes in the morning, just meditate for five minutes. Right. And just like start there, which then became the workbook of A Course in Miracles, which then became, you know, other things. So I think what I would recommend for folks is to start yeah. small, start before you're ready <laughs> and start with your nervous system and what it can do. And then I was applying this uh, information and this routine when I started working as a waiter on Fifth Avenue. So my schedule was all bonkers and still stressed about all those things. But I'm like, all the more reason why I need to have clear thinking here. Yeah. So in one year, Trisha, it was kind of crazy. I started just doing five minutes of meditation a day. Then went to Course in Miracles, building habit momentum, as Jane Clear says in Atomic Habits. Yeah. And then one year later, uh, Queer Cosmos was founded. Uh, I was offered a literary contract for my book, and yeah. I was living in a completely different reality. Oh, that's one year. One year. One year. One year. And, and you know, you're. Commitment. Go ahead. Oh, just like, you know, that idea of one year. One year is very short. If for most of us, like we can, we can think, oh, if I could change my life in one year and you know, when the, the, the mind says like, oh, but today you're miserable, but what, you know, in a year you're going to be God willing alive. Would you? Right. Well, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Right. right. Yeah, God I mean, willing alive, kind. And, and I think people get nervous. They feel like, oh, I have to do it all at once. Right. But James Clear says, no, just start small. You know, he uses this amazing story about somebody who would become like this award-winning bodyweight champion uh, that he started going to the gym only three times a week for five minutes at a time. Yeah, That's how small this person started. 
Yeah. That's what we need to do. And then just yeah. kind of have the faith and know, listen, what's in it for you is everything. So just <laughs> please, please invest in that spaciousness for you. Yes, invest in you. And that's the thing. It's like I, uh, discipline, you know, discipline can strike us as, well, first of all, they used it in child, you know, when we were children to mean like you were grounded or you got a spanking or something. Yeah, right. But the word discipline, when you are the Lord of the manor, d- using discipline, it, it speak of, the root word of it is disciple. That's to right. what, to whom, to what are you a disciple? So if I'm a disciple of my own energy, of my own inner beauty, frequency, love, desire, you know, my capacity, my potential, that's what that discipline can serve, I think. And I did, me too, I just started meditating and a year later, Technically speaking, nothing had changed in my life, meaning I still had the same job, which uh-huh. a year prior to that, I could I had no time and I was working from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. and I had no time to meditate. Technically, I still had that job, except that I had gotten a raise and I had gotten staff and I had gotten this and I woke up whenever I wanted to and wow. meditated and did my thing as long as I wanted to. So my life just, you know, your life just starts to shift around it if you can demonstrate that belief and totally. process the, of your own the yeah, cultivation. Too willingness, Mm -hmm. cultivation. I think we need a little bit more willingness from folks and the willingness to get uncomfortable at starting something new. I think in addition to a lot of other weird cultural phenomenon, one that I'm noticing too, is just an absolute unwillingness to not want to start anything they're not already good at. Oh, Oh, forget it. And it's like, hey, Jupiter's in Aries, the first sign of the Zodiac, also the one known to be brave. So it is brave to start something new, but I think there's something really exciting but you're vulnerable about being yeah. in that growth space, but get busy living or get busy dying. Like, mm-hmm. you know, we really, we can't screw around with this shit. Here I go yeah. again, cursing. I'm sorry, but you yeah. can curse. It's okay. I have a permanent E explicit on my podcast. I can't get rid Wonderful. of it. Wonderful. All right. Because I've <laughs> cursed a couple of times. So, okay. So curse all you want, right? Because I can't get rid of this. Okay. <laughs> I get it. No, it's fine. Um, okay. Well, the last thing I want to just uh, ask is how people can work with you. What are the work you're doing? How people can, can connect with you? Yeah. What are you up to? And because you're just so amazing. And I want to make sure people know how to get some of that, get a spoonful Listen. of you. Trisha, likewise, I love the way that you speak and teach and communicate. You are like absolutely the master at grounded metaphysical approaches. Nobody mm. shuts it down like you do in that way. Like, <laughs> I swear. Well, you do. Uh, no, no, you're way better. No, no, no. You're a lot better. I could stand to be more metaphysical. Like, I like that you're like, Gene Keys, human design, this and that. What about Sasquatch? We're not really humans. I'm like, oh, damn. You know, like, I want to I wanna talk to her. Okay. Uh, but if they would like to stay in touch with me, I would be shocked after how I performed here. No. What? Uh, that would be, that'd be uh, at Queer Cosmos on Instagram um, and on my website, queercosmos.com. And I am going to be offering readings this summer. Uh, and there's some little erratic availability as I can. I'm going to try to be deliberate about taking off this summer as much as I can. But I would be honored. And I do uh, tech subscriptions now, which I really oh, love. Yes, so, I'm doing yes. it. We have the- Yay! Yes. I'm so glad. I love yes, it. See? it's so much fun. So mm-hmm. I offer that. Um, and I have some like astro- pre-recorded astrology things on my website. But yeah, there's lots of different ways that we can work together. And your readings, natal chart, uh, what uh, you natal astrology natal readings? readings. Okay. Yeah, natal okay. chart readings. And then if like there was someone in there who wanted to, like a compatibility analysis, I'd be happy to do that if the person has permission. And you know, of course, I, yeah. they're there. Uh, but yes, yeah, so I do natal chart readings and compatibility, like couples counseling sessions as well. And how about uh, books? Because you ha- you're not. I do have book. books. <laughs> yes, yeah. I do. Yes, thank you. A little bit of astrology. <laughs> Uh, it was my first book. And then Queer Cosmos, The Astrology of Queer Identities and Relationships is my second book. And then I wrote a book exclusively about Gemini, just called Gemini. Oh, yeah. oh that's so sweet. I love it. Yeah. And I, and I was definitely in my Gemini energy when I was writing it. Let me tell you, getting into trouble everywhere. But it was awesome. So yes, I do have a significant student loan tab. And since my school has been mentioned quite a, a lot here, it was wonderful but expensive. So if anybody wants to buy my books and help me pay back my student loans, that would be very appreciated. Awesome. Great. And also imbue themselves with deep wisdom and excitement and intelligence and inspiration about all the topics that you 
communicate. That would that would be the goal. I hope that's what they receive <laughs> from that. That would make me very happy. I tried really hard to make it worth their while if it's in their hands. So yeah, yeah. and so we'll have all of your information in the description. And and I want to emphasize the text community subscription that he's yes. that Colin's talking about. And it's multimedia. It's the easiest. It is so easy. So I've been talking about it mine for you know on this podcast. It is so awesome. It is so easy. It is so dynamic. It is rad. So it's multimedia. So we actually get uh, like a few times a week. And sometimes, I mean, it's really great. Like Colin's your best friend in your pocket telling you exactly what's going on with the energies and how you can feel positive about it and what you can do about it and what's available to you. I love the text that I got this morning from you. I was like, oh, oh get it. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Thank you. That means so much to me. Yeah. And I, I would love for us to like, yeah, communicate off social media because yeah. like you said, oh, yeah. we're just scrolling. So I'm trying to get people off the apps and like into mm-hmm. separate places. Yeah. Decentralized. That's De- the word. Decentralized. Thank you, Capricorn Moon. Not, yeah. It's not owned by Zuckerberg. Nope. It's not, not owned yet. by Bezos. Nope. No, it is not <laughs> decentralized. Decentralized. I see. This is what I mean. You don't <laughs> screw around. You know the w- earthly dimension. And then you talk to me about gene keys. Like the, yeah. the versatility you have, Trisha, is. Stop phenomenal. it. You, I didn't bring you on to, to, to say. No, I brought no. you on to say that about you. <laughs> no, 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 no. Listen, I, you really do. You've mastered it. I want to get on your level. So thank you for that mm. inspiration. And thank you for the conversations that you provide to so many. And thank you for this. This was such a joy. So, so endless fun. thanks to you. Thank you, Colin, for coming on. Oh, really, you're course. you're just such a gift. And I feel deeply honored, deeply, deeply honored. So everyone, Colin Bedell. Likewise. Thank you, Trisha. Well, how was that? How was that for you? <laughs> it was certainly a blast for me. Just so... I'm so invigorated by his energy, by his positivity, and also by his authenticity. I'm going to post this on YouTube as well because you just see his authenticity, you know, beaming through his attention, his presence. I mean, you can feel that in the audio as well. And so I do deeply encourage you to go and check out all of his work, probably start with his first book, A Little Bit of Astrology, and really move through all of them. And he made so many recommendations of profound, um, you know, knowledge, profoundly knowledgeable authors and teachers. Um, you could listen to him for hours. So maybe go back to the pod- through the podcast and listen and take notes of, because he just like offered so many, uh, you know, suggestions for the teachers from whom he is learning. And of course, A Course in Miracles. So I want to also direct you to his Instagram, because like I said, it's it's not just entertaining, you know, like some Instagrams are, which is totally fine, really giving true inspiration and um, kind of a, um, a compass for where we are in astrological energies and just so, just so much. And he has on, sometimes I've seen him have a uh, co-lives with other kinds of authors and practitioners and just the just such a light well that's what i have for you with this episode with colin and once again i would love to invite you to please uh, you know go ahead and subscribe or follow this podcast share it with someone if you are inspired to do so also do find my instagram at trisha car charm and my website trishacarcharm.com you can find all of this information in the description and i just want to take a moment to express my extreme gratitude to you for listening. I've actually had all of a sudden uh, kind of a wave of of more listeners of this podcast. It seems to have really grown suddenly. And so I want to thank you if you're listening, if you're sharing. uh, Well, you are listening if you're listening, right? (laughs) But I want to thank you so much for that. And um, I, I just have to say, I really appreciate everyone who not just because you're listening to my podcast, but because you are seeking light. You are seeking your own light and you are drenching yourself and in, in, um, in enmeshing, involving yourself in positive and spiritually aligned and seeking content and energies. So thank you so much for raising your vibration, however it is that you're doing it. And thank you for bringing your light to our beautiful world. And thanks for tuning in. I love you, whoever you are.